Pilots, Drain Man here, and today I have a very special video. Today we are going to take these regular old DJI goggles and we are going to pimp them out. I watched a video on a breakdown of these goggles and it took him several, several hours and I can't imagine what he went through to get them put back together. So we are not going to do that. All we are going to do is we are going to pull these eyes out that you see right here and we are going to hydro dip these eyes and I would imagine it's going to make these goggles look pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get these two screws, as you can see right here, we want to get these screws out. All right. After you've done that, go ahead and lift them off. And you'll see back in here is very sensitive parts of your goggles. So if you're doing this outside, do not leave your goggles sitting in the sun. Get these back inside and put them in a cool, dry place. I'm going to set mine aside because it's, it's cool and dry in here. Now, another thing that's very important is these screws. Do not lose these screws. I don't know how difficult it would be to try to match these screws exactly, so don't lose them. Set them aside in a place that you're not going to lose them. So I'm going to set mine right here, and as we come back, they'll be there waiting on me ready to go. Now that we've got it out, we're ready to go. We're going to take this outside, and we are going to get our base, our primer, and we're going to get this thing ready to go. For me and my background and what I've chose, it's going to be best for me to have these white. So I'm going to go ahead and get these painted in white. Let's go. All right, pilots, we are outside. We are going to spray. I'm here on the bench, a different bench, but it's still a bench. We're going to do our best to spray without the wind interfering. Let's go ahead and go. All right, pilots, it is just that simple. Keep a nice, steady hand back and forth, back and forth. Do not pause with your finger on that trigger. All right, let's take a peek and see how we did. Came out gorgeous. All right, now it's time for the sad part, which is where we wait for it to dry. So in the meantime, there's a lot we can do. Let's go get started. All right, pilots, so we have sprayed the eyes. They are white and they are drying. This part takes some time. You don't want to rush it and you don't want to dip while your paint is still wet. So it's important to take that time to do your prep work now. And that's what we're going to do now. And right now is where you get to see the design that I've picked. All right, here we go. I'm going to pull it out. And as you will see, my design... Not only is it super cool, it also really doesn't have a background. It's more of like a, you know, a, a, a stylish tattoo type look where you're going to need a nice background and then the lettering and the styling will cover on top. That's why I chose white. So don't just go for white because you saw me go for white. Depending on what you pick, that'll be what's best for you. All right, here we go. Now we are going to get our film ready. And here is where you will spread it out and make sure it's nice. And you should have plenty of extra when you're done. You can go ahead and dip your radio. You can dip your DJI radio. You can dip anything you want. It, really, it's endless. As long as there's no electronics or anything like that, you can pretty much dip anything you want. All right, now for this part, you are going to need some masking tape or I don't recommend duct tape, but if you don't have masking tape, get some duct tape and you'll need a pair of scissors. You're also going to need a general idea of the size of your eyes that you're dipping. That's assuming that you're dipping the eyes like me. If you're dipping something different, you're going to need the size of that item. As you can see, there's not much real estate on here. This is only so big. So we're only going to be able to fit so much of the design. So I'm going for that. Now, what you'll do is you'll rip, have yourself a clean piece of tape. And then you're going to basically just tape that area off. Oh, 
yeah, that fell out of my hand. So guess what? That is where it's gonna stay. So now we'll come across here, just like that. And I'm probably blocking off too much, but that's okay. We, we'd rather have extra than not enough when we go to dip. Okay. And all of this extra that's on the outside doesn't necessarily have to go to waste. Or if you're not too picky about where your design's going to land, you can go ahead and just block off a corner and then you've got the rest to use. But I bought this film just for this dip, so I'm going to be sure that I pick the exact spot that I like, which is the spot that you see here. All right, so now that we are taped off, we have the spot that we need. We need to take the scissors and we need to cut in here and get this cut out. Before I do that, there is a test that we have to do because there's a certain side that goes in the water. When you take this film, you know, you can go on top or you can go on bottom. It does matter which side goes in the water. So there's a little test you can do. And you just take your index and your thumb finger and yeah, get them nice and wet, not too crazy. And then we're gonna just grab a corner here of the film and we're gonna pinch. And when I release, you'll see that it stuck to my thumb on this side, right? It didn't stick to my pointer, it stuck to my thumb. So that means that this is the side, the bottom is the side that's going to drop into the water. That is why I put the tape on the top. So if you put your tape on the bottom, it's not the end of the world. You'll just flip it over when you drop it in the water. No big deal. But the bottom or the sticky side is the one that is going down in the water. All right, let's go ahead and cut this out. Okay. And I am definitely going to save the rest of this because there are more things that I would like to dip. All right, pilots, we have made it back. We have painted it and the paint has finally dried. And as you can see, it came out really, really nice. No, it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be, but it does look really, really good. And the next step is for us to go ahead and dip it. Now, you are going to need a container. If you don't have one, get one. I use this one right here. You want to make sure that it is big enough for your film to fit, but you don't want it to be so big that you can't contain what you're doing. Also, you want it to be deep enough so that the item that you're dipping can go all the way under and be completely submerged as required whenever you're doing a hydro dip. Now, something else that's very important when you're dipping is, and I found a way around it for this, is when you are dipping the surface and you're holding that item, well, your film is going to have cutouts wherever you're holding it. So that is why you have to find a way to dip whatever you're dipping. Most things have something that you can grab, you know, whether it's a cell phone case or whatever you decide to hydro dip, unless you're following along and you're doing the same item as me. So what I've come up with is I found a little suction cup and I'm going to suction cup right here to the eye and that will give me uh, somewhere to hold it and grip it while I submerge it underwater. Because if I don't have anything, well, then you're gonna see my fingers cut out of the eyes and it ain't gonna look good. And I'm not going for a ain't gonna look good look. Now the next thing, before you go to spray, you need to make sure you have your activator ready. This is a activator. It's a special chemical that gets sprayed. So I'm gonna give that a good shake. And we're gonna have that on standby. All right, the next thing you need to know about dipping prior to dipping is your water. You cannot just have whatever temperature you want. 
I'm not a professional hydro dipper. I mean, maybe you can get away with more rather than less, but this manufacturer, and I would recommend that you go by your manufacturer, but my manufacturer for the film that I purchased, which I will put a link down in the video description, they recommended that it be between 85 and 95 degrees. So I use my temp gun, which I use for all sorts of stuff, you know, with the quads, we use these kind of things. And I use this to get an idea of my temperature. And right now, let's see what I'm ranging at. I am at about 95 degrees. And I prefer to be on the warmer side, so I'm gonna call that literally perfect. Let's go ahead and get our film in. All right, pilots, so there is the dip. The next step is to go ahead and rinse this off. The last and final step is to put on a clear coat. This is not something you want to rush. You want to take your time. You want to do it right. You want to go ahead and give it more than one coat. You want to make sure you're spraying nice and even. And clear coating is important because that's what's going to protect it. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, pilots, we have made it. We have made it to the finish line. We are here. Our DJI goggles eyes are done, and they came out absolutely beautiful. Check this out. Look at that. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, so we are going to grab it, and we're going to put it on now. Now I'm going to remove my little suction cup that I used as a holder throughout this process, and I'm going to go ahead and put this on. If you noticed any imperfections around your edges or anything, feel free to pull those off of yours. All right, who's ready to see how they came out? Are you ready? Here we go. Ah! Ooh! Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, pilots, check me out. Huh? How do I look? Looking good or what? Alright pilots, it was an absolute pleasure. I had a blast doing this. This was so much fun. I can't wait to do something awesome next. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.